Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, my name is Seth Nelson. I manage partner strategy and operations here at Fundera with a particular focus on gov government guaranteed programs, uh, including the SBA. So the SBA's Paycheck Protection Program uh, was passed into law as part of the CARES Act, which was signed on March 27th, 2020. This program uh, has been authorized up to $349 billion to provide loans to small businesses across the US. Um, and it's actually a forgivable loan program, which is meant to keep small business owners and their employees working uh, for an eight week period uh, from the time of which you receive the loan. So during this time, we're gonna talk about what the PPP program is and how you can go about applying for a PPP loan directly through Fundera. And you will be considered for the loan through one of the PPP lenders on our platform. Just a disclaimer that this information is current as of today, April 6th, 2020. Um, this program is evolving as the various PPP lenders work with the SBA and the Treasury Department to nail down exactly what some of the specific requirements are. So please consult uh, Fundera's Small Business Relief Hub for all things uh, current on the PPP program. So in this presentation, we're going to give you an overview of the PPP, talk about the product and eligibility requirements, and we will also do a demo of what the PPP application looks like through Fundera. And again, we'll provide some resources for additional, additional frequently asked questions that you can consult. Great, so at the highest level, the PPP or Paycheck Protection Program provides small businesses with funds to pay up to eight weeks of payroll costs, including benefits, um, as well as mortgage interest, rent, and utilities. So these are the four categories that you can use the loan for and have the loan forgiven, which effectively makes it a grant to you. You can use the loan for purposes other than these four categories, but the loan will not be forgiven. So again, this product is called the SBA Paycheck Protection Program. It's part of the CARES Act, as we've discussed. The product type is a forgivable loan when used for payroll, mortgage interest, rent, or utilities. Again, a forgivable loan just means that you will be reimbursed uh, and will not have to pay back the loan if you use it for these purposes. In terms of security, there's no personal guarantee or collateral required for this product. The loan amount is calculated as two and a half times your average monthly payroll up to a maximum loan amount of $10 million. So we'll go into detail later in the video here as to how this calculation works. But again, the loan program is meant to provide a cash infusion for you of up to two months or eight weeks with a little extra cushion, hence the two and a half times. The interest rate is fixed at 1%. And the loan term is two years for any portion that's not forgiven. And that goes into effect um, from the date of the loan itself, the date on which the loan is issued. Again, if the loan is forgiven, then the term doesn't apply. If any portion of your loan isn't forgiven, uh, you do not have to wait and make payments over the two years. You can pay it off early if you like so that you don't continue to accrue interest. And there's no prepayment penalty for doing that. If, you, if your loan is forgiven, any portion that's forgiven will be uh, both principal and interest, not just the principal. The payments for this loan are monthly and there's an automatic six month payment deferral. Although during that period, interest will continue to accrue. So let's say for example, you're approved for a loan um, today on April 6th, um, over the next eight weeks, you can use the loan for payroll, mortgage interest, rent, or utilities. And if you do so, you can apply with your lender uh, for forgiveness. So during that time period, because you're within the six months, you don't, uh, you don't need to make any payments on the loan because of the automatic six-month payment deferral that is included with the loan. However, if you don't use a portion of that loan, for one of those four purposes, then that portion is not forgivable. And so you will need to start making payments on that amount 
after six months from the date on which you got the loan, which is in this example today, April 6th. There are no fees for this loan. Uh, the lender does not charge you anything. The SBA does not charge you anything. Um, and if you work with Fundera to secure this loan, we do not charge you anything. In full disclosure, Fundera earns fees uh, as a percentage of the loan amount from the lenders on our platform. And those amounts are fixed. Similarly, the lender is earning its fees directly from the SBA, which also varies by loan amount and that amount is fixed. None of those fees can be passed on to you as the borrower. So if you are charged any fee from anyone in connection with getting this loan product, uh, you should report that immediately to the SBA. In terms of eligibility for this product, again, the forgivable uses are eligible payroll costs, which we'll talk about, mortgage interest, rent, and utilities. In terms of eligible entity types, all businesses, including nonprofits, veterans organizations, tribal concerns, self-employed individuals, sole proprietorships, and independent contractors with 500 or fewer employees are eligible. In some cases, if you have more than 500 employees, you can still be eligible if you meet the industry-specific size standards. You can click this link here and you'll be redirected to a page at the SBA in turn that shows you the overview of the size standards. Um, so you can consult that page for more details based on your specific use case. Um, in terms of citizenship status, you do not need to be a U.S. citizen, uh, but you must have a tax ID number, which is either a employer ID number, EIN, or social security number, SSN. Uh, this is different from the uh, specific requirements of the EIDL that we talked about earlier, where you need to be either a U.S. citizen, a qualified alien or a legal permanent resident. In terms of ownership disclosure, again, all owners with 20% or more ownership in the business need to be uh, on the loan. And so we'll show you what information they need to provide. In terms of your credit score, there's no stated minimum. Same on revenue, as well as time in business. However, there is one important piece, which is that you do need to have been in operation on February 15th, 2020. This can be proved through, excuse me, this can be proven through providing documentation such as a bank statement or a payroll statement that shows that you were in operation on February 15th, 2020. And we'll show you what that looks like. In terms of state eligibility, there's no restrictions on in terms of eligibility for this product. However, Fundera is not licensed to work with clients from Nevada. So if your business is based in Nevada, we unfortunately cannot work with you and we recommend that you go to your local bank. Uh, you can also consult our small business relief hub, which has content on all of the banks that are currently set up across the country to offer PPP loans. And you can consider working with one of them directly. Again, from a credit elsewhere test perspective, which we covered earlier in the video, this is waived for the PPP, which is great. Um, it makes your eligibility easier in that you don't need to prove whether or not you have funds available in your savings account uh, or through another source such as insurance that might have covered business interruption or a loan from another lender that has provided you uh, cash during the COVID-19 crisis. A little bit more on the eligible uses of proceeds. Again, payroll costs, including benefits, interest on mortgage obligations that were incurred before February 15th, 2020. So the mortgage must have been in place before uh, 20, February 15th, 2020. Similarly, rent on lease agreements that were in place before February 15th, 2020, and utilities for which service began before February 15th, 2020. A little bit more about the specifics around eligible payroll costs. You are eligible compensation to employees with a principal place of residence in the US include salary, wages, commission, and tips. I wanna point out that this is capped at $100,000 on an annualized basis for each employee. So if you have an employee that is paid 120,000, inclusive of both salary and or benefits. You can only include the first 100,000 in terms of eligibility as it relates to payroll costs. 
So if you have one employee, say, that makes 120,000 and another employee that makes 80,000, you cannot claim up to 200,000 in eligible payroll costs. You can only include, in this example, 180. So you can include the 80,000 for the employee who makes 80,000 and the up to 100,000 for the employee who makes 120,000. Uh, your employee benefits include costs for vacation, parental, family, medical, or sick leave, allowance for separation or dismissal, payments required for the provisions of group health care benefits, including insurance premiums, as well as the payment of any retirement benefit. State and local taxes assessed on compensation are eligible, um, as well as for a federal, excuse me, for a sole proprietor or independent contractor, wages, commissions, income, or net earnings from self-employment, again, capped at $100,000 on an annualized basis for each employee. When you are doing the calculation, you uh, should not include uh, independent contractors because independent contractors can apply for a PPP loan on their own. So that's an important piece here, which is that uh, even if you pay independent contractors yourself, uh, they can apply directly on their own and so should not be included in terms of the calculation of your average monthly payroll. Similarly, there's some more uh, eligibility components which are not dissimilar from the EIDL that we discussed earlier. I'm not gonna read through all of these, but these all must be true. Additionally here, these also all must be true, as well as these components and I'll add that you certify these things to be true when you are going through the application. So we'll show you what this looks like in Fundera's PPP application. In terms of how the average monthly payroll cost actually is calculated, for most businesses, this is gonna be based on your average monthly payroll for all of 2019. So you'll want to provide a monthly breakdown or an annual uh, roll up of your payroll for all of 2019. And then you'll want to divide that by 12 so that you can calculate your average monthly payroll. This is what will be used to determine your loan amount, which again is based on two and a half times your average monthly payroll. For seasonal businesses, you can elect to use your average monthly payroll from February 15th, 2019 through June 30th, 2019. Uh, the way that you would do that calculation is by adding that up and then annualizing it to make it a 12 month basis, and then divide that number by 12 to get your average monthly payroll. You'd also wanna provide the documentation that you used to do that calculation, which in this case would be February through June payroll statements. If you're a new business and you were established after June, 2019, so starting July 1st, 2019 or later, then you can use your average monthly payroll as January 1st, 2020 through February 29th, 2020. Again, you'll want to annualize that, which means multiply by, uh, in this case, six, uh, because you have two months covered, and then divide by 12 to get an average monthly payroll. And again, you'll need to exclude costs over $100,000 on an annualized basis for each employee. We'll show you shortly uh, what this calculation looks like and where you can find it in a payroll statement that you have from your payroll provider. Uh, there's a number of different rules as it relates to the eligibility for your loan to be forgiven. So at the highest level, your loan uh, forgiveness can be for the full principal amount as well as any accrued interest. The borrower will not be responsible for any loan payment if you use all of the loan proceeds for forgivable purposes, which we'll get into again what those are and that you maintain your employee compensation levels, uh, your employee levels as well as compensation levels. So again, the purpose of this program uh, is to keep people employed during this crisis, which has forced a lot of businesses to close and therefore lay off people. So unless employees are rehired by June 30th, 2020, then the amount of the loan forgiveness will be reduced based on the reduction in the number of employees or the reduction in the amounts paid to employees. So the idea is to keep people on your payroll paid the same amount as before the, the crisis caused by COVID-19. Or if you have already laid off people due to the crisis, then 
they'll need to be rehired by June 30th, 2020. So the actual amount of loan forgiveness will depend in part on the total amount of documented costs in the following categories over the eight week period following the date of the loan. So you'll need to provide proof of documentation via documentation that you used the PPP loan for these purposes. That includes payroll costs, uh, payment of interest on mortgage obligations incurred before February 15th, 2020, the same for rent payments as well as utility payments. Uh, and importantly, the SBA has clarified that not more than 25% of the loan amount uh, that is forgiven can be attributable to non-payroll costs. So again, the intent of the program is to keep people on payroll. So if you use, say, 30% of the loan for rent and you use the other 70% for payroll, only up to 25% can be used for rent. So in this example, 70 plus 25 equals 95% of your loan would be forgivable, whereas the remaining 5% that you used for rent would need to be paid off um, by the end of the two-year term. As mentioned previously, independent contractors do not count as employees for the purposes of loan forgiveness because they can uh, apply for the PPP on their own. So even if you have loan, uh, even if you have independent contractors that are employed through your business, uh, they can apply for a PPP loan on their own, so are not an eligible payroll expense as it relates to loan forgiveness. As discussed earlier in the video, um, if you used the economic injury disaster loan for payroll, uh, you'll be required to refinance that loan into the Paycheck Protection Program loan. Um, if you used it for a different purpose, then there's no impact on your eligibility or how the PPP loan would work for you. But if as part of that loan, you received an advance for up to $10,000, um, on the EIDL, then that amount would be deducted from the loan forgiveness amount on your PPP loan because you've already been granted that money. And then finally, um, only employees residing in the U.S. are considered for purposes of calculating the loan and forgiveness amounts. So again, if you have employees that are not in the U.S. in terms of their principal residence, then they should not be included when you are calculating your payroll amount as it relates to the loan amount or any forgiveness amounts. In terms of how the process works for forgiveness, you can submit a request to the lender that uh, ends up actually underwriting and funding your loan. Um, that request will need to include documents that verify the number of full-time equivalent employees, also known as FTE, uh, as well as pay rates. And you'll need to also, you'll need to also provide any payments uh, excuse me, any documentation on payments for eligible mortgage interest, lease, and utility obligations. You need to certify that the documents are true and that you use the forgiveness amount to keep employees and make eligible mortgage interest rent or utility payments. And upon submitting your request for forgiveness, the lender has 60 days from the date of the receipt of your application for forgiveness to actually calculate the amount that can be forgiven based on the documentation that you provided. So in a nutshell, you provide documentation supporting your use of the loan for eligible expenses to be forgiven. And then when you submit that request, you should expect an answer on the forgivable amount within 60 days from that lender. So this program went live starting last Friday, April 3rd. And so starting, on la starting last Friday, April 3rd, Small businesses and sole proprietorships could start applying for this program. Uh, the application has been live on Fundera since Wednesday, April 1st. And so you can head over now and apply at fundera.com slash PPP. And our network of lenders will assess your application and be the ones actually funding your loan. Starting April 10th, independent contractors and self-employed can apply for the PPP program. Again, you can apply today on fundera.com slash PPP, and we will start submitting your applications to the lenders that are on our network on April 10th, so this Friday. 
all applications must be submitted by June 30th, 2020. Um, the one thing that is important to know is that currently this program is capped at $349 billion and loans are being approved on a first come first serve basis. So the sooner you get your application in, the sooner your application will be seen by a lender and the sooner you'll get funding uh, within the cap. So if the funds do exist by June 30th, if there's, in other words, if there's still funding available as part of the, that 349 billion that's been allocated, uh, you can apply up to June 30th, 2020. But again, we recommend you applying sooner rather than later. In terms of the documentation that you'll actually need to apply for this program, there's really three things. There's the application itself. Uh, you can complete this again by going to fundera.com slash PPP. You'll need documentation supporting the average monthly payroll cost. So again, for most applicants, that will be payroll statements for all of 2019. And there's some differences if you're a seasonal business or if you're a new business, which is defined as a business that started on or after July 1st, 2019. Your payroll statement should ideally show as much detail as possible so that the lender can identify eligible payroll costs, which we've covered. So that includes compensation to employees whose principal place of residence is in the United States, cash tips or the equivalent, payment for vacation, parental, family, medical, or sick leave, allowance for separation or dismissal, as well as these other categories that we have covered earlier in the presentation. You must also provide documentation that demonstrates that your business was in operation on February 15th, 2020. So the easiest way to do this is to provide a payroll statement for February 2020 that shows that you're actually paying employees or a bank statement that shows that there has been a withdrawal from your account for payroll. Um, so the easiest way to do that is a February bank statement. If you're unable to provide any detailed summary from your payroll provider, um, so if you're not using a payroll provider such as ADP or Paychex or Gusto, which are some of the major payroll providers that are providing uh, statements specifically designed for the Paycheck Protection Program, uh, which is a really nice feature for, for any small business owner who's using uh, their payroll services and applying for this program, um, then uh, you'll need to provide documentation such as the following. Um, also, just a disclaimer that uh, Gusto is a partner of Fundera's. So if you are a customer of Gusto, um, we actually have a program set up where you can be referred over from Gusto to Fundera to help you with your PPP application. Uh, so anyway, these are some of the other documents that can be helpful to establish payroll amounts. So these are all 2019 documents. IRS Form 1099-MISC for any independent contractor. Uh, the IRS Form 1040-C, which is a personal tax return Schedule C if you're a sole proprietorship. IRS Form 940, which shows um, payroll and includes unemployment costs. IRS Form 941, which includes quarterly salary, wages, commission, and tips. Um, so you can provide four of those, which will uh, help provide proof of your payroll cost for all of 2019 since it's a quarterly statement. Um, IRS Form 944 is an alternative to 941. It's the same document, just annualized. Uh, you could also provide IRS Form W3. So there's space in the Fundera application for you to upload all of these documents. Um, again, what the lender is going to want to do is verify the average monthly payroll amount that you put in your application which informs the loan amount. And so any documentation that you use to make that calculation, you should include in your application so that it can be verified by the lender. Uh, 